it, it's that sense of integrity that, that he has that I, I, I find it's inspiring though. That, uh, that, that rather than follow someone else's dictates, he, he remains true to his original idea for the show. To, to expose people and uh, to, to all this music and his whole format. It's as if you're, you're hanging out in this living room and he's he's the, the kid on the block that says, well, look, I, I discovered this new album, I discovered this new music. And he, it's it's uh, it's like a, 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 a feast of new music that, that he introduces to us every, every week. And uh, that, above everything, in, else is the reason that I listen, listen to him for, for these, these 20 years now. Remember, I had started listening back in the days when it was, you know, sort of, you know, I was younger too, obviously. I didn't have the same viewpoint of the world that I probably have today, that I certainly have today. It was fun and exciting and thrilling, I suppose, back in those days to listen to someone do a radio show that's supposed to be on, say, from whatever two in the afternoon until midnight or something and then the guy would just keep going for another hour or two or three or four as he was often prone to do yeah. kind of with all the exact hours and, you know, and he played good music but Ben always came across as a, uh, a very honest and, and generally decent person and that meant a lot to me too I guess and the other people who were on WNEW really at the time as well it was almost like a one, one in a once in a lifetime opportunity to have listened to that sort of radio back at that point in time not really something that'll that's likely ever to happen again. Uh, even on Sirius, it's just uh, Sirius is, is is just different. It was a cold January evening, and he was mentioning how he was just feeling isolated. He was feeling trapped in his emotions, if you will. And at that time, there was a song by Southside Johnny and the Asbury Jukes called "Trapped Again," and he played the song. And as kind of talking about prior to playing it. He talked about his emotions and how he was feeling, and he thought that song summed up his feelings very well. And I thought that really showed Vinny just, you know, showing his true emotions, just showing really who he is, and being honest with all of his fans. Vin is a very good interviewer. He's, he's, he's certainly one of the best, because he has a conversation. And he listens to the people that are talking to him, and he keys off what they're saying. Vin is actually an artist on the radio. He makes his art on the radio. He is an artist. And what I listen to for all these years is his art on the radio. That's, I think, a great way of summing it all up. And thankfully, somebody is making a documentary about him because this is an important human being in the history of New York radio, I guess. Listening to Vince Kelsa while painting is very inspiring. His music, his rare music, his interviews with people, and his words of wisdom give me so much inspiration. And it's a great thing in the background. And I would like to thank him for that. All of the paintings I painted, I heard Vin in the background. I've been listening to Vin Skelsa for 17 years, since 1990. 15 years out of it, I was listening to him in Israel, in the Middle East. It happened when I first met Aileen and Hans at the New School in 1992. And when I returned to Israel, they mailed me audio tapes of his show for 10 years. Everything you see now, they have a part of it, and I really would like to thank them now. Vin was the music editor of Penthouse Magazine from 1988 to 1992. Within the pages of Bob Guccione's provocative men's magazine, Vin wrote his monthly column with the same air of sophistication and respect for the music. Reaching out further to the community, Vin Skelsa helped to promote one of the most famous venues of music in New York City history, The Bottom Line. 
He was the co-creator of a musical series called In Their Own Words, a bunch of songwriters sitting around singing. The shows became a part of New York music at the bottom line in New York City. The series gave birth to the careers of many of today's highly respected folk, jazz, and rock artists. The bottom line fell victim to the lost respect of music. Vince Skelsa spoke openly on the air about the heartbreak of losing what many considered to be a New York City landmark. Vin continued to branch out into all arenas of the music world by sharing his eclectic taste in music in a series of CDs called Grooves. Subscribers to this series of CDs were rewarded with first-hand reviews written by Skelser about the artist. In 1994, he was asked by writer Mark Elliott to write the foreword to a biography of Phil Oakes entitled Death of a Rebel. Mark Elliott had been a longtime guest on Idiot's Delight, and he knew Vin shared an understanding and appreciation for the life of Phil Oakes, a troubadour, an early pioneer of the folk music scene along with Bob Dylan. Phil Oakes committed suicide in 1976. In the foreword of the book, Vince Gelsa captures the curiosity of every listener of Phil Oaks' music. In one of his many stories about his love of music, Vin describes an episode in the 1960s while driving with his family, announcing to his mom and dad, listen to this one, and playing a Phil Oaks song entitled, I Ain't Marching Anymore. It was at this point he realized the generation gap between himself and his parents, as well as the passion for something different. Yes, I even killed my brothers and so many others, but I ain't a marching anymore. In 1995, with the advent of the internet as one of the most powerful tools for communication ever conceived, Vince Skelsa gave his approval to listener Scott Persky to start up a listener-based digest. The Idiot's Delight Digest was born in 1995, and members continue to post to it every day. Vince Skelsa shares with his listeners the something more that he felt the calling to while a young boy. His love of family and friendship are the core ingredients longtime listeners feel a kinship towards. They consider Vin in many ways like a member of their own family. It is delight slowly joined the ranks of radio show folklore, joining such famous shows as William B. Williams' Make Believe Ballroom from the 1940s and the musings of great rock and roll radio luminaries like Wolfman Jack, Cousin Brucie, Harry Harrison, Jonathan Swartz and Gene Shepard. Mm -hmm. 